right, uh, you're welcome back. It is indeed TVC Breakfast. And, uh, well, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has shifted Saturday's governorship election in a dose state to Wednesday, uh, September the 28th. The INEX National Commissioner for Voter Education and Publicity, Solomon Choyebi, said the Commission's earlier decision was due to the absence of official communication from security agencies. At about 6 p.m. today, the Commission received official communication from the police and DSS, drawing its attention to the need to postpone the Edo governorship elections. Such a postponement, the communication indicated is necessary in view of threats of terrorist activities in Nedo and other, other states of the federation during the election and over the Salah period. The deployment of security personnel countrywide to secure lives and property will overstretch their capacity to at the same time provide adequate security for the Edo elections. Consequently, the Commission notes the request of the security agencies and considering the security implications of proceeding with the elections, the safety of eligible voters, electoral officials, including an ox staff and other stakeholders, has decided to reschedule the adult governorship elections to Wednesday, 28th September 2016. The Commission enjoys all eligible voters and other stakeholders in Edo State, political parties, candidates and all other stakeholders to be peaceful and law-abiding at this junction. Right, joining us now is a lawyer, Libros Oshoma. He's been following the election. Libros, good morning. Good morning. It's good, good to morning see you. to you. My pleasure. Yeah. And of course, joining us from Benin City is TVC News political correspondent Ayodele Ozumbaku. Uh, good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Ayo, my, my question is, uh, you know, if you can describe for us what the mood is in Benin City, uh, where you are right now. Uh, the morning after the... Uh, election was uh, postponed, at least the announcement of it. It's uh, something very, very difficult for people, people here in Benin City to live with because they've actually prepared for Saturday's election. A lot of people had to come from wherever they're working for this election. What happened yesterday, they're still trying to come to terms with it. And even though, as I'm talking to you now, they still don't have a clear picture of what is going to happen on Saturday. Or maybe there's going to be election. There won't be election. The way I'm staying right here, the manager of the place actually came to knock at my door yesterday night, trying to get information, asking me what is the exact position. And this is as a result of the back and forth that was characterized by that exercise since day before yesterday. Since day before yesterday, when the advice came from the security operatives in Abuja, it has been difficult for INEC to make a decision. At first, INEC came around 10 a.m. yesterday to tell us that they are going ahead with the election, they are going to keep the sanctity of democracy, that there is not going to be teleguided by any institution, that their institution is actually very an independent one and they are going to go ahead with the um, um, election and they are 97 percent sure that they have everything it takes apart apart from security to go ahead with the election and they went ahead with the election they went to start distributing the non sensitive materials all around the 18 local governments and they went further by gathering of observers and briefing the hard rock staff that they are going to be using for that particular election. But I tell you, by the time it was 7 p.m. yesterday, their hands, you know, they were forced to actually uh, just come to terms that without security, that election can never, never hold. All right, uh, let, let's bring in Libros in here. Now, when it comes to security, that is a major factor in the kind of elections we organize in Africa, not just in Nigeria. But a day two election, 
we think from the outside when we see these things that the logistics for election the assurance whether this election can hold on security grounds would have been determined about even before a week ago to be very sure that there can be election guaranteed uh, security guaranteed for this election um uh, I, in answering your question i pray that that day will come in nigeria where we would um, not need you know heavy presence of security to conduct election where we would you know leave our offices and just walk to the pool, cast our vote, and go back to work. Where we would not have to shut down the entire state or the entire federation just because we were conducting election. But that said, um, we are where we are. That we cannot deny. And, and so, I had expected also that security forces should be proactive rather than reactive. But it's obvious that our security forces right from you know this um, democratic dispensation or right from the challenges of insecurity had been reactive rea in, in, in their approach to issues and so it is typical for you to hear there are um, tips on security challenges or security breach or attempt to bomb or attempt to invade or attempt to burn down and that's so because of that, we cannot guarantee, you know, safety. And then, in spite of that, in some cases, you find that, that these actions will actually take place. And then the security operatives will react and say, yes, you know, we're on top of the game. And um, go about your normal duties. One would have expected that, you know, you, these um, alerts, are heard by security operatives and then you brief the people to say look things like this are going to come up but we're on top of the game go about your normal duty will ensure that it does not happen mm. and truly people will go about their normal duty and corporate are arrested and brought to book but that's not the case here uh, it's unfortunate also where security operatives tell you that we got you know um, uh, information that some hoodlums are going to strike and so for that we are not sure if we can provide security what does that say in itself what it says to 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 people and the way it paints us in the committee of nation is this country is still not ready in terms of security uh, because if, if you look at um, um uh, i listened to ayo's closing statement he said as at 7 pm mm -hmm. INEC was forced to come to terms you know and then the question you ask is the moment the uh, dss and the police issued that press statement or addressed a press conference mm. in abuja why the first step should have been to call INEC, brief them of what is on ground before even going to the press they all work for the same government organizations okay. so one would have expected that there's a synergy there's a collaboration after all for every election in nigeria these are agencies that work together INEC had said we have provided 95 percent of what is ready as a matter of fact 97 exactly ready we're already on ground so the three percent that is remaining is security mm -hmm. and that we can't provide for ourselves and, and we all know the way our politicians behave you know without security the tendencies to want to hijack these sensitive materials the tendencies to want to win at all costs and, and, and so for that, INEC is helpless. The moment um, uh, DSS and police addressed that pre press conference, I knew that we would get to this point. Mm -hmm. Mind you, it was the same script that was played in 2015. At that mm -hmm. time, we were not certain. But when they addressed this press conference, I said, oh, here we go again. Because in that 2015, um, the then DSS said, um, uh, the then National Security Advisor, had to inform us in London mm -hmm. that, you know, he had asked INEC to postpone the election. Mm -hmm. that in a private discussion, was so arrogant about it. And this one also, I also see some form of arrogance from the security agencies. And INEC in 2015 said we had not been briefed. And the same thing with this one, we had not been briefed. And thereafter, we are consulting. But in 2015, we kept debating. But now, I just said there was no need for a debate because how are you going to go? When, when INEC insisted 
yesterday at about um, 10, I, I said, no, this is uh, grandstanding. Mm -hmm. You know, how are you going to go ahead with election when the security operatives okay. are saying okay. um, we cannot guarantee security? Let's, uh, what let's, if anything goes wrong? Indeed, exactly. Let's go back to Ayo, who is on ground there. Yes. Uh, in specific terms, Ayo, uh, what can you tell us about the reaction of uh, uh, not just the, the electorate themselves, the voters, who are the main, I mean, they are the most important factor in all of this, but the, the political players themselves, the APC and, uh, of course, the PDP uh, both candidates and, or maybe even their representatives. What, what exactly, what feelers are you getting from them? The political players, uh, they are overstretched. This is just a deja vu of what happened in 2015. They are overstretched. They, they've extended their resources across the length and breadth of Edo states. They've campaigned rigorously vigorously around 18 local governments across Edo states and they've extended huge resources. It's not a very, very tough, I mean, it's not a very, very easy call to make on the part of INEC because the resources that was extended in mobilizing these people, the same resources will also be required because people had been mobilized, personnel had been mobilized, ballot papers were ready, a lot of other logistics that and that is entail, that it's required for election around at those states and this same thing the same time you find out politicians as they are going from length and breadth of the states to canvass for votes they are also you know the electorates are also asking for money if they are, even if the electorates are not asking for money they tend to throw money at the electorates so it's a tough call it's a difficult call they are going to spend more money that they are overstretched already. And I can tell you that most, the average political party on the field, especially the leading one, the leading one between the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressive Congress, they've been campaigning for close to one and a half years. One and a half years in trying to do this, trying to make sure across the Edo states, they woo voters and they do that with money. They will do that with huge resources. They go, they go further, they print t-shirts, they go face cards, a lot of souvenirs all around. And it will also require that because 48 hours in politics is a very long time. It will also require that kind of, um, that kind of uh, input in terms of campaigning. Radio jingle will continue, television jingles will continue. And some of them, they, they do as much as 200 slots a day for television, do as much as 100 slots for radio and the same thing newspaper advertorials the billboards you know, funny situation by the time you erect billboard in those states here the next day you come you come back you discover that the billboard has been vandalized and by one of the opponents and the next time you will go there again and you see the other bill another billboard will be erected so in terms of logistics on the part of INEC in terms of um, logistic on part of the political parties it's so, so, so enormous. And even foreign observers, they had to travel out of their bases. And they had a fixed time that give or take that by Sunday, the Sunday which is on the, Sunday which is going to be on the 11th of September, that they will get, they will have results and maybe to return to their various countries and destinations by Monday. And if you don't forget, there's a public holiday on Monday and Tuesday, Mbazi. All right, Ayo, we're going to put you on hold. We'll come back to you shortly. Now, let's give you a general overview of the political development in Edo State. Edo State was created on August 27, 1991, by the split of the uh, then Bender State into two. Edo State, which is popularly referred to as the heartbeat of the nation, has its capital in Benin City. The state has 18 local government areas and a population approximately 4 million. Edo State is home to many indigents and other settlers. Some of the major ethnic groups are the Benis, representing 58%. The Esans, who represent 17% of the population. The Afamais, or Esako, represent 12% of the population. The Owas represent 7%, while 6% of the population are the Akukwedos. Now, this representation is according to the state government's website. Now, 19 candidates from different political parties have been listed by the Independent National Electric Commission, 
to contest for the governorship seat come September the 28th when Edo people will head to the polls from this rescheduling we have now. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at the main contenders. Godwin Obaseki of the All Progressives Congress, Osage Izeyamu of the People's Democratic Party, and Onaiwu Osaze Osaro of the All Progressive Grand Alliance. Now, who will take over the saddle of leadership? Mm. That's a very interesting question. Yeah, don't forget uh, that point. certainly there are uh, about, other... About uh, 17 the, the, or so others? Yeah, so about 16 three, other... Three gentlemen, yeah, 16. 16 other true. candidates vying for the uh, mm. uh, seat of the governor from different political parties in there. Okay, now uh, let, let's, co let's come to um, uh, Libros in the studio now. Let, the issue of communication is very vital when a public office or a public assignment or public project is involved in here. Now, what is wrong with communication? Like what's the impact or implication of wrong public, uh, communication? Or maybe doing it at the wrong time in the right way, as the case may be. Mm. In yeah, this it, kind of it's, a, it's a very big problem. One minute delay can cause a whole lot of hazards. And, and, and that's why there should be um, the need for effective communication. And that's why you see, you know, um, developed countries keep working at effective way of communication. And that's why in, in, in some um, um, organizations, you remember when the Blackberry just came out, you know, it was a two for immediate and instant communication mm -hmm. and and so some persons at that time were even you know advocating for um uh, extra pay because even while at home they 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 they, they keep the communication going but here we find you find out that most of the people at you know that level of um, leadership either do not know how to use these communication gadgets or even when they do they intentionally, you know, leave out these um, uh, uh, tools. You still see us writing long hands in office, still retain secretaries to type. When all you need to do is sit down, even with your phone, you can receive and, 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 and send emails. Mm -hmm. What stop uh, this, uh, 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 security operatives from, they should have numbers of each other. You send official communications for a meeting to all, all uh, or um, you have them, um, you know, uh, these days, the commonest one, the WhatsApp chat of security operatives, or as the election, as you're preparing for the election, there is a hub where all stakeholders, you know, meet, you know, online and, 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 and hold meetings regularly on the way to go. And, and so, these are, you know, modern ways of communicating. So, it makes it become very easy. So, people are not taking unaware. So even journalists that are going to cover the event would you have know, been informed. Would have been informed. Would know. What, what do you beforehand. make? What do you make of uh, Shoyabi Inex uh, Shoyabi saying that there was no official communication uh, from the DSS and of course the police, you know, to Inex uh, advising on the postponement of this election? You even at the press conference in Abuja, you heard um, the the, the uh, spokesperson saying they are appealing to Inex. So it shows clearly that they had not spoken with INEC, that they are appealing to them. At, at that time also, mind you, the INEC chair was in Benin, mm -hmm. addressing stakeholders on the way to go for election. In, uh, after the um, a leading political uh, 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 candidate had signed a peace accord. So INEC, to all intent and purpose, had felt, okay, we were on the right track. And also, we were informed that about 25,000 policemen had been mobilized mm -hmm. to Benin for the election. All of a sudden, there was a press conference addressed by the same police in Abuja. And be that as it may, like I always say, even if there were security alerts, we knew in about six months ago now that election was going to hold in Edo, either September or, or thereabouts, until the date was fixed. But from four years back, we knew that come the next four years, we are going to hold election in Edo. And then also, we also know that our politicians, they, they, they have a peculiar way of going into elections, you know, in terms of, you know, their tenacity for violence. And so the police and the DSS knew that they were going to provide security on that day or around that time. Mm -hmm. So we will not be out of place for like one month to the election. They already have surveillance in the border towns 
to this state, you talk about the Orion War area, the Gile Gile area, mm -hmm. uh, in the Bini Aziz, you are very conversant mm -hmm. with these places. You know, the Ubogui area, yeah. you talk about from Akukwedo, uh, the Kale Aziz of um, Ikilon, Ikironle, and the rest. And then the Okmila Aziz uh, from um, um, uh, the northern part, you know. And then um, Magenebode, you know, on that same Aziz, you know, and possibly Anegbete on, on the Riverine area bordering uh, Benue State. You know, all of these places, one would have expected that you have at least surveillance in these places. Mm -hmm. And so as to be able to nick any um, security crisis in the board mm -hmm. and take out people you know would for foment trouble mm -hmm. at this time. But for us to throw, up, uh, throw our hands in the air and say there's security challenge and so uh, give us two weeks, typical of us, to clear out this challenge. Mm. What if? And you just, just wonder what whether the two weeks will make any difference. Uh, exactly. Uh, just uh, what uh, if? Just hold on. The after boss. the two weeks, mm. you know, there is already also another challenge. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, we'll certainly come back to this. <laughs> All right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast and we're discussing uh, the Edo uh, election and uh, the postponement, the implications and all of that. We have uh, with us in uh, Benin City, Ayo Zubaku, our political correspondent, is reigning in there now yes, and indeed. Ayo Zubaku is putting on a raincoat there Already. now. <laughs> That's not, how the weather is. It's not a very envi enviable <laughs> position to be in right now, yeah. Ayo, but you, and you don't know forget, the job's don't, got to go on. Yeah, but don't forget we still have uh, Libra Soshama with us <laughs> in the studio and uh, we've been uh, talking about this. Now, let, let's get to Benin now. Uh, Ayo, you have been on ground in this development from yesterday has there been any forum or uh, avenue where all the <clears throat> excuse me all the contestants or the political parties come together to consult as to what is the way forward and how they can work together to ensure there's peace and harmony in towards the election before professor Mahmoud yakubu came out with uh, the, uh, the uh, this uh, INEC came out with this verdict yesterday there was a consultative forum with political parties and stakeholders and in that consultative uh, particular consultative forum it was clearly stated that this is going to question the integrity and the credibility of the election if it, it's postponed those stakeholders one by one professor mahmoud was writing and he was looking at it and he was looking at them listening to them and he was writing one by one at the point in time a, a certain guy from one civil society group actually told him that look former professor atayu jaga uh, the former INEC chairman professor atayu jaga raised the bar when it comes to election in nigeria that since professor mahmoud got there it's either a case of inconclusive elections or true or postponement of election uh, what does he want is uh, what does he want uh, what like, kind of legacy does he want to leave and he told him promptly to resign his post as the chairman of the independent national election uh, electoral committee a big commission and that's how bad the situation got um, this today is Friday on Wednesday evening that's how bad it got and they were telling him that it will dislocate a lot of things that it will affect a lot of things that two weeks they can't just afford two weeks and we should not forget the legal angle too come October 12 come October 12 I think from the INEC window that the day of to conduct elections stipulated at, on inside, um, right inside in the, in the electoral act to the day or to the handing over day, the, the, there must be a particular uh, number of days. I think 60 to 90 days, which is a window. They are dangerously moving towards that window. If election is conducted on the 28th, on the 28th of September, let's say it's, a, it's going to be a, a Wednesday, give or take. We have rooms that we, what we've seen in the last uh, in how many months, couple of months, that the election might be inconclusive, and we have, you know, they'll fix another day for this particular election, and that will put INEC, will make them to be walking on a very very tight rope, to, uh, in, in, in spite of the constitutional uh, requirement. So these pol these political parties, they are going to be re-strategizing. They are going to be all over the streets. They are going to continue with their door-to-door -door campaign. They are going to come their house-to-house -house campaign. 
they are going to be asking for uh, people to vote for them. They are going to still be asking, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. It's as if they are starting all over again. Two weeks is a pretty long time for them to prepare for, the, for uh, September 28th. That's what they're considering here. And if you don't forget, they have so many things they want to do here. There's going to be this coronation of the Oba of Benin. Yes, the new Oba of Benin. And the, act, the activities, you know, they're expected to start anytime from tomorrow and it will be climax on the 26th of September. And you agree with me that Bini Kingdom, they don't take tradition with kick gloves. It's something they hold and it's something that they will all have to be involved in. And doing this side by side with campaigning, I don't know how this will go, Mike. Okay. Uh, well, let, let's come back to um, Liboros right here in the studio. Uh, as you take cover, um, are you right there in Benin? Because it's raining uh, cats and dogs and elephants there. Now, what difference do you think these two weeks would make? And beyond this, INEC initially said it had weighed the consequences and parameters of postponing the election. And then it uh, capitulated. Now, when INEC says it actually, you know, did a thorough job of checking out exactly what it would mean, you know, for this election to be postponed, and then it, you know, you, you, goes back on its own work. You wouldn't blame INEC in, in all of this, mm -hmm. although I, INEC had had the blame in uh, an inconclusive election, but on this... Surely, and on the basis of that it, already, people are having, you know, there's hardly confidence that... Uh, the uh, Mahmoud may not just deliver another inconclusive election exactly. when it does happen. You know, people were of the expectation that, oh, look, we hope this is not going to be inconclusive. And INEC had did, indeed promised that it was not going to go the way of others. And, and so, also, uh, Edo State being a state in the South-South region, we saw what happened in Port Harcourt. Mm. We saw what happened in... Um, in, in, in Baesa and Imo. Baesa, in Imo. Uh, in Imo. Mm -hmm. And then Edo also, it's not a state you can say it's either PDP or in APC. Mm -hmm. uh, even though in Edo state, out of, of the three senators, you have one APC and two PDP. Um, in the House of Assembly, you have APC majority. Yes. And the governor is of the APC stock. In the House of Rep, you have PDP majority. Uh, you know, so even during the last election, you had um, a PDP um, 55 APC 45% votes and so it is not a state you can say this clear. definitely this party it's clear that this party will carry the day and, and, and so for that it's or, 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 uh, originally a, a place where you say would be a hotbed for you know um, some of um, um, some miscreants who would want to play you know uh, want to use the opportunity to, to foment trouble and most especially will you know how politicians will want to snatch ballot boxes mm. in this part of the world and so that's why one would have expected that the police would have been at least 10 steps mm. if not let's say three steps since they can't go further than that <laughs> ahead of, of, of um, uh, miscreants or, 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 or militants as the case may be but in this case like just the way it was in 2015 even if INEC were not ready even if INEC, you know, everything they had said were, were, was grandstanding. But INEC, it is obvious now that the fault is not theirs. INEC had been blackmailed into submission. Because if you remember, as a 10, when INEC said they were going to go ahead mm -hmm. to distribute non-sensitive materials, the police withdrew. It was in the news also that the police withdrew that they cannot provide security. And then there was also a, a, a subtle change in the initial um, a, a, a press release of the police. Initially, they had said that there were threats from some, some elements to attack the state between 12th and 13th, the Salah period. Mm -hmm. And so the police now said why they are asking for postponement is because uh, they would be overstretched. We did not just know that Salah was going to take place around this time mm. today. We knew long ago. Mm. And then also, we also knew that uh, election was going to take place in Edo on the 10th. And Don't then also, forget another too. thing. Don't forget the GCA. The GCA, exactly. Why? 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 Mm. Also, talking about communication, we also knew that the GC mm. mathematics exam was going to take place on the 10th. Mm. Which is a West African, is the a West West African, African exam. program. INEC had said that they were not going to postpone election because of that international exam. 
<laughs> and, and so, you now begin to ask questions. Why fixing these dates? Shouldn't there be a collaboration between all these agencies of government? You know, especially when you know that at this period, um, uh, certain uh, uh, organizations of government would be conducting exams. Remember those days, it used to be May, June, mm -hmm. and then it was postponed. And so, you should know, and there should be a hub of activities, Indeed. you know, among stakeholders on what dates should be, you know, more appropriate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, if we were discussing postponement because of the exam, say, two weeks before now, then most of the materials that had been deployed on the feed wouldn't have been deployed. A lot of money that had been spent in the past two Already. weeks would probably not have been spent. But we waited until die minutes and then raised the flag of insecurity because that's the only reason prescribed in Section 26 of the Electoral Act where you can co uh, 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 postpone election. But the reasons must be cogent and verifiable. Security, when they say security threat, how do you, who is a non-security mm. personnel, says you want to verify a security threat? Mm. And so when INEC insisted that they were going to go ahead, I, I knew that we'll get to this point. All right, let, let's bring in Ayo in here. Mm. Ayo, you, you are on ground and security has been given as a reason for the postponement of this election. Have you seen any extra movement or any deployment or any unusual movement of security presence or security personnel in, in and around Edo State, anywhere from what you have observed? Mike, it's not uh, the usual way, it's not the usual thing you see when we, we 24 hours, 48 hours to a, the election. It's not all, I can say all is not uh, well. Because yesterday I gathered authoritatively that INEC immediately decided that they wanted to go ahead with the uh, uh, election on Saturday. They needed security, DSS men, and armed mobile policemen to escort them to the central bank to bring the sensitive materials down to INEX um, Secretariat here. And they will also be needing them to uh, help take the, escort the sensitive materials across the senatorial district and what level. And they, they discovered that they were in forthcoming. Most of the security men, maybe they got instruction from their superiors in Abuja, they, they weren't around. They were, the 25,000 security men that the Inspector General of Police spoke about at the stakeholders, uh, uh, stakeholders uh, meeting were nowhere okay. to be found. And you, you can't, you can't actually place your hand. But the regular policemen around a do police command in Benin City, they were patrolling the streets. But they weren't going out of their way. You didn't see, you know, normally this is like a collaboration job. They would bring in um, policemen, DSS, um, NSCDC men from neighboring um, states. And you, when you go to the police headquarters, normally you find every vehicular movement and you will see every presence of security men around the police headquarters. But that is not what we noticed yesterday. It was business usual, as usual at the police headquarters. I personally went to the police headquarters around 8.30, 9 p.m. yesterday. Mm. So seeing them yesterday, I discovered that this is not the way it, it um, used to be anytime there is election in any states. So I think it was, they had, INEC, they had to be forced to bow to the superior power of the uh, security agencies because security agencies hold like 80% of the, uh, you know, the responsibility during any particular election in Nigeria particularly. All right, um, Ayo, before we quickly let you uh, go out uh, from under the rain there, do you see voter apathy rearing its head as a result of this postponement? That will not, that's, uh, that is a possibility. It's a big possibility. I told you earlier that the political parties will go out of their way. They must remobilize because people are tired. People are battle tired. They, 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 they've gone out of their way. Some of them, they've had to readjust their lifestyle, you know, to live with the noise of political parties, vote for me, television adverts, having to go, you know, open, um, tuning on to television stations, just see a politician making promises. So 
they had to remobilize them because I particularly I overheard a man yesterday and he was saying that he's done with election in Edo State, that he's, he's not going to go, come out to vote again, that the, the system is just very, very stressful. All right. All right. Ayo, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, let's leave you now so you can uh, uh, leave the rain and monitor other things as well. Thank you. Now, let's bring in uh, Fola Dili in here to let us know what uh, the reaction of the people are on social media. Fola, it's good My to see you. Good morning. morning. Lovely mm. to see you, Liberace. <laughs> All right. So, um, I'm sure if we call this an intense or dramatic period in Edo State, I'm sure we'd be right. Mm -hmm. I mean, one minute people are getting ready for you know, the elections, and then the next minute they're hearing that it's actually not happening, happening anymore. So let's, let's see how people are reacting to this. Liberos, I want you to pay, you know, keen attention. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get your reaction <laughs> to some of these tweets. All right, first one here is from at Afro Sheri, and she's saying, the Edo State election should be interesting. It's sad because the election is a two-party type election, meaning either PDP or APC will win. And there was actually a tweet yesterday where someone was saying, um, let's remember that there are 17 other candidates oh, yeah, in this exactly. election. Mm. Yeah. All right, next one here is from at Nijama, who's saying, remind me again, what happened the last time an, inc an incumbent government, government rather, in Nigeria postponed an election on security grounds? Hashtag Edo decides. Next one from Demola Rewaju, who's saying, the kind of fiasco witnessed on Edo decides to me represents another chapter turned in the book of tyranny we are reading in Nigeria. At UOKK, Edo has never had any terrorist attack or threat, but now they postpone election because of terrorist attack. Edo decides, hashtag. And the last one here from Amani Era, who's, and she's tweeting this, um, he rather, he's sending this to INEC and he's saying, I hope you're reading the minds of concerned Nigerians. We say no to rigging in Edo State election. Liberos. Uh, uh, <laughs> what do you think? Yes, um, you, you find out that um, People are, are tired. Mm. Like I said in my opening statement, people want to get to a, a level where you really don't need to go through all of these dramas to vote in an election. And people also want a situation where they will be able to change any government mm. that is not performing. And so for you to do that, the only avenue that will enable you to do that it's through a transparent election. And that's why you see people keep insisting and people wanting to participate. And with the you know, multiple channels of communication now, uh, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, you see a lot of people, even people who are from this region, but do not necessarily, you know, are not on ground in those state, would want to have their say. Mm -hmm. you know? So and that's why I also expected that it is high time INEC should be looking at you know, upping their game in terms of voting. In the last administration, I knew they were attempt, you know, to shut down even um, uh, uh, card readers, uh, that mm. it was not part of our electoral yeah. laws. And but there were also an attempt to amend Section 52 of the Electoral Act to the effect that rather than uh, uh, say that uh, the uh, uh, mode of voting should be by uh, uh, paper balloting, mm. that the mode of voting should be determined solely by INEC. So if INEC decide to introduce electronic voting, just the same way we see people participating, you know, electronically, then so be it. But this idea of, you know, keeping all of us in suspense and then one organization just come, maybe on the morning of the election, to mm -hmm. say, look, we can no longer provide security. And you listen to Ayo also. It is sad that at the end of the day, even when INEC insisted, mm -hmm. saying, okay, police, we need you to escort us to go collect sensitive material. And they head back, you know, instructions from above. So there's also need for us to begin to look at our security system. When we talk about restructuring, some persons just think it is about um, um, the, the government itself. We need to restructure our approach to issues. Mm -hmm. We need to restructure on bundle our mindset also to some of these things. A situation where somebody sits down in Abuja and determines the curriculum of everybody in Nigeria mm. is no longer feasible uh, in this day and age. All right, Fola, Fola. thank you very thank much you for coming on the you. program. All right. <laughs> now, Liberos, uh, we thank you for coming on the program. This is where we wind down this segment. Mm -hmm. And we also thank Ayo Zubaku for joining us from Benin City earlier on.